name is Kristen Platt and I am currently a member of the teaching faculty in the Department of Neuroscience at the University of Kentucky. As I am wrapping up my first year of running a very large class, I thought it would be timely and useful if I summarize my advice for teaching large classes with a specific focus on tackling the first year, mostly in terms of workflow and managerial tasks. My foremost comment on staying ahead of your workload is to keep on top of emails. You may think that you have an idea of the email load you will have to manage, but if you prepare up front, it will simplify this task immensely. For one, I created a flowchart addressing what to do before you email Dr. Platt. It may seem trivial, but many students may email asking erroneous questions that could be answered elsewhere, if only they tried those alternative avenues first. In addition, do not let emails pile up in your inbox. Playing catch up is troublesome. A student recently told me that the current unofficial standard that they anticipate is a 24-hour turnaround. While I personally find this expectation slightly unrealistic, it is worth being cognizant of these sentiments. Also, be okay with sending out a class announcement through your learning management system when you have reached a critical mass of emails addressing the same topic. An additional suggestion in this area would be draft form replies for common queries, such as technical issues, or how do I study for your class. In the mail management program I used, I started saving these form replies as signatures at a colleague's suggestion, which has worked quite well. Finally, don't be startled the first time an assignment link is broken or something else malfunctions. You will have a wave of emails flood your inbox. Take a deep breath, draft your form reply, and decide if you've reached your class-wide announcement tipping point. Now, I do not want for this email discussion to come off as impersonal. I firmly believe in replying to every email to the best of my ability, but I also believe in simplifying my workflow. Another area of concern when heading into the first year in the large class is managing grading and assessment. Don't drown yourself in grading or in sheets of paper. Simplify grading with your learning management system by programming homework or quizzes into there, or use a publisher resource, especially if you do not have TAs to delegate to. Instead of having paper submissions, I have found it works quite well to have the students upload a photo or scan of a laboratory worksheet or other assignment to my learning management system. This greatly facilitates grading and, to be frank, there's no good way to transport or store paper submissions from 500 students. Perhaps more importantly, plan well in advance of your first exam. In my case, I give a paper exam on Scantron forms and I make four versions of the exam. Luckily, my department provides proctors for me so the process is manageable. Do you have TAs or proctors to rely on? This will greatly impact your process and may require some creativity. As a side note, in my opinion, you should try to avoid losing sleep over cheating. Even if you have four proctors in the room with you, there is no good way to watch every student in the class like a hawk. A sage mentor told me to recognize that they will get cut when the stakes are far higher, and it isn't worth the energy invested to agonize over it. Now, while cheating is of course exceedingly inappropriate and worthy of consequence, and due effort should certainly be made to prevent it, I'm simply suggesting that it can easily become an exhausting task if you let it. My final comment on grading management for the large class would be, get good at Excel. I'm going to segue now into several statements about managing the large class that require less elaboration, but I think they are still worth saying. First, on the topic of office hours. I have two approaches for office hours. The first approach is by appointment for which I will make every effort to find a time that works for all students. I emphasize that it is so simple to meet with me. All the student need do is send me an email with three times they are available so that I can directly reply with one that works. Scheduling office hours this way eliminates at least two emails back and forth, and we've already established the importance of the email situation. If you're going to hold open office hours, which I typically do the week leading up to the exam, Consider that you may need to book a room. I can sardine a large number of students into my office, but it's much more pleasant for all of us if I book a room in advance. And sometimes there are simply too many of them to fit in my office regardless. Next, I suggest encouraging students not to hand you random pieces of paper, such as excuse notes, accommodation letters, or sports and university club documents. 
This is a personal preference, but I find that I can only address concerns and questions in these areas when I have the query in my email, and I can process and respond to it in my own time. Do make a plan for how you will organize these documents when they are handed to you. Also, on the paper issue, consider how you are going to transport and store these documents, in addition to Scantrons and any other physical assignments, if you go that route. Put statements in your syllabus that you can refer to when needed. I would argue that this is especially essential in very large classes. For example, one key statement that I find very useful to have in my syllabus is regarding late assignments. I have a policy that clearly states that a student may petition a grade up to seven days after the grading event. This means that it is easy to stave off the influx of emails that will inevitably come finals week that say, I finished assignment five, I just forgot to post it to the learning management system by the due date. Here it is attached to this email. Can I get partial credit back? The reply drafts itself, as I'm sure you can imagine. Dear so-and-so, as indicated in the syllabus, assignments close one week after the grade is posted. On a very different note about large classes, embrace your large sample size for education, research, and scholarship. Even if only half of your class consents to participate in the study you have designed, you still have a remarkable N to work with. I have a number of pieces of advice for tackling the first year that are not specific to large classes that I won't share here. I'd be happy to discuss these with any interested parties. My email is easy to find. Let me share my final thoughts to conclude. There are three things that I personally believe you absolutely do not want to do, in any class certainly, but particularly in the large class. These are never change the grading scheme, never change a deadline, even to postpone it, and never change an exam date. If you do, you'll be the one getting 100 emails about it.